We're going to get started with the presentation. Um, this is the Business Solver training course that we'll be doing for the next two hours. We're going to have a, a lunch in between. And uh, I think we're doing this kind of organically. Not that the lunch is organic, but you're going and getting the lunch. That's organic. <laughs> so whenever you're ready, please feel free to go over and, and grab uh, a bag. And um, this actually probably won't run the full two hours. What we're intending to do, Jackie Jamgochin and myself, um, is we're going to run through the platform in and of itself. And what we did for your purposes is everyone should have a copy of, of the presentation in part. It's not in full, because what we wanted to give you guys was screenshots of the real applicable uh, components for Business Solver. So you can take that back to your offices, and then when you go live, which is either going to be the end of day tomorrow or the beginning of Thursday, you're all going to get an email which is going to say, you're now live. Here is your login, and you're going to create a password, and then you'll be able to go into your particular site and, and meddle around. The reason that we didn't give access up until the end of day tomorrow or Thursday is uh, no offense, but we didn't want you guys getting in there and meddling around until we got all of the work done. So we have been spending the last four or five days processing all the open enrollment changes, and we wanted to make sure that that was all done completely and as accurately as possible so that that will now all ship to Independence Blue Cross tomorrow. And that's going to be the EDI file, the electronic data interface file, which is going to recognize all the open enrollment activity from all 143 Paysboa schools. So we wanted to get that out. And then after that's gone, you guys are going to be able to get in and see everything. But we'll do that for you today as well, both with screenshots. And then actually, we're going to go live. And I'll flip into, into the platform. And uh, I'm actually going to get hired by one of the schools. Jackie's going to load me into, into one of you. So uh, I think Yerick's over here at Arcadia says, I'm OK. I might cut the mustard. Good. OK. You can, you can be hired by us. So within five minutes, I'm going to get hired. I'm going to go on to their medical plan, get fired, and get Cobra. So it's going to be a whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it. OK? All right. So what we'll do for the, for the purposes of the next, you know, uh, 60 to 90 minutes is we'll take a walk through this uh, business hour platform and, and we want to keep this as open as possible like we usually do so if there's any questions please by all means raise your hand and ask them I'll restate the question because we have the webinar going on at the same time so we have about 10 people logged in and so therefore I can't stray from the podium and the microphone uh, and I will do new, that, that restating of the question piece all right so why are we even in this room having this conversation? There's this need for Business Solver, and I just wanted to take a moment and remind everybody why the need existed. The need existed because of the Affordable Care Act. There was an unintended consequence to the Affordable Care Act that said small groups being less than 50 in 2014 could not have claims used when writing their renewal. Well, we had 65 plus small schools that were beneath that threshold. Blue Cross said to us, we need to abide by the law as the carrier, therefore these schools have to come out. So what we did instead was circumvented that by formalizing ourselves into a trust and said to Blue Cross, no, we're not 143 schools, 65 of which being small, we're one entity. We're the Pays Boa Trust. And so we spent all of last year getting to that state, we achieved that state, but then the next wrinkle was, well, Blue Cross sees us as one entity, therefore has to bill us as one entity. And therefore, we needed to put a third party administrator in place to handle all billing and all enrollment. It was a massive task, and we have spent an enormous amount of time getting ready for it, just even in preparing for this massive task. We, we spent many, many meetings here, Helen, Christine, Saf, Michelle, uh, I know I'm missing some others that were a part of that TPA search committee, Mark Gibbons, um, months looking at a number of different vendors and talking about what was going to be the vendor that would meet our need. And we, we ended up on Business Solver for a number of different reasons. We liked their agile technology. We liked that they used what's called uh, SaaS software as a system as opposed to hardware. And frankly, this is the best part. Jackie and I have been working on the system now for just a couple of days. But everyone in our office, they're all seasoned veterans of keying. Any system you want. All right? So we put things into systems all day long. 
And how long have you been doing this? You mean overall? Overall, on a career. 20 years. And I said to her and Lisa and Sharon Douglas, what do you think? And they said, we love it. It's one-stop shopping, and it will be, I think, joyous for all of you to see how quick this goes. It's very impressive, and we're really pleased with what we've ended up with. All right? The work in the back end has been arduous. We've been having daily calls with Business Solver for the past two months. We've been having standing weekly calls with them for the past five months. Because in order to get this thing up and running, it involved a lot. It involved sending 23,000 people, every member and all dependents, on an electronic file over to Business Solver for the initial build. And they put that all together in the back end. But then we had to do it again, because that was old information, so we needed to update it. We had to send out every plan structure for every school that pays BOA had then, and then all the open enrollment changes. And then we had to send out all of the open enrollment elections that just occurred. So not only did we change a school's benefit election, but then we had to actually get in there and change Joan Smith's election as well. So it's been a tremendous amount of volume going you know, between parties of Independence Blue Cross, Business Solver, Delta Dental, ADC, but amazingly enough, we got it done. Um, further kind of complicating matters is that while we were doing all this, Blue Cross was doing that. Because Blue Cross has moved over to the Highmark platform. So it was a great convergence of uh, a lot of things. And what complicated our life was this. This, this is the crosswalk. All right, you can't see it because the font is so small, but the first school up there is Abington Friends. And Abington Friends actually runs the first 19 lines of that spreadsheet. Now, does Abington Friends have 19 plans? No, they don't. But because of this Highmark transformation, we had to take all of the existing plans at Abington Friends and Abrams Hebrew and every other school in here and transform them over into a new plan setup. So we're sending all of this data for the members and all the data for the plans, but then also all new group numbers for all the new schools under the new Highmark IBC platform. So it was a lot. It was a lot. And what we ended up with was where we're standing now. Um, it's complete. The job is done. And we, Jackie, I, John Doyle, everyone in our company, we're relieved. <laughs> now, just, just a quick comment before we get into the actual training. I have to remind people that Blue Cross did change its systems. And as such, every one of those 23,000 people is going to get a new ID card. Now, I've said this publicly four times, and there's three YouTube videos to back it up and another one coming today. So when those cards come out and your people go bonkers, you know, you were told. And what we're asking people to do today and between now and really the beginning of November is to advise everyone at your school, new ID cards are coming in the mail. They're different from the one that's currently in their pocket. The one that's in their pocket is YXH or QCB and then six numbers. The one that will be showing up in the mail is much longer. And so if they show up to the doctor in the beginning of November with the old ID card, there is a chance they'll be told your coverage has been termed. So imagine that at the pharmacy, imagine that at the doctor's office when they call you and say, I didn't even make a change. I'm getting my payroll contribution. I know I'm on the coverage. They're telling me I don't have care. That would be infuriating for anyone. So what we're advising people to do is tell your members to go on IB Express. Use that tool to find out what their number is. You can't see this because it's a little bit squished down here, but over on the left where it says, welcome John Mannion, okay? Th that is actually my ID number right underneath it. And then if I follow the prompts, which is with a red arrow, and click on ID, it will give me the ability to print out my ID card right there. Now, this is rather significant. In years past, your members could call us and we would print them out or we would email them a PDF or they would contact you and you would do the same. We have lost that functionality. Blue Cross removed it from both the broker and the group administrator. So now that onus is completely pushed onto the member. So when you get that panic call when they're at the Walgreens without that ID card, you are actually handicapped in that regard. So we're saying, let's get out in front of it. I have a lot of paper over on the table in the back which explains exactly how to do this. I will send it out to everybody this week as a PDF and you could forward that out to your people uh, via email or you could take a, a pile as, as well 
and put it in people's mailboxes. But Noah built the ark before the flood, so let's just try and get ahead of it. Also, if you want to impress your younger teachers, tell them there's an app for that. They love hearing that. So just say, go on to your app store, pull down IBX, and within three clicks, they have their ID card up and running. Again, uh, a very easy user functionality. IB Express on their desktop computer or the IBX app on their phone, just making sure that everyone is aware of the fact that everyone gets a new ID card, the number is new. If they show up with the old at the pharmacy or the doctor, a good chance they'll be told coverage is terms, okay? Lastly, speaking of the ID cards, as I said on the previous slide, we're making every attempt to get this data into Blue Cross and push through so that this is all a moot point, and that would be wonderful. But I know who we're working with, and no insult to, to Andrea or anybody at Blue Cross, but you know, we, we've been around this road before, so we're just preparing for you know, what may happen, all right? When will those numbers be available? We're actually gonna be available, um, the question is, when will those new ID numbers be available? They're going to be available 11-1. So you can't get it 10-31 or 10-29. What we're asking people to do, though, Cindy, is just go in and refresh your IB Express account. A, a lot of people have them, um, may have forgotten the password or the username. So just go in and, and reset that and do that now in October. That way, come 11-1, you go right into the system and you're good to go. Um, that's what we're just advising people to get ready for it beforehand. Okay? Yes? Would we be able to pull somebody up in the IV Express, the administrator site, and see their ID number? We have been, t the question is, can you go into IB Express and pull up their ID number? We've been told from Andrea, me, and at Blue Cross that we're going to get a data dump for all schools, all members, all ID numbers. And we can use that, Helen to assist people, so we would have that, and I don't think that's something that we necessarily want to send out, so we'll get that on a secure basis, but if you were to call us and say, uh, so-and-so needs their number, we, we might be able to assist in that regard. I'm gonna have to check with Andrea to see if those numbers will still show up on um, the portal, okay? All right, but that's a good pivot point because I'm gonna talk about the portal right now. Yes, Anna. you will start this in October, November. When you say, the question is, we don't go live until January, you're talking about your Westlake system, right? This is University of the Sciences uses uh, a current platform called Westlake, as does Eastern, I know Patty's online, and, and two other schools, University of the Arts being another one. Um, you are going to be live, Haverford, Michelle, she's the other one. You are gonna be live, 11-1. All the changes are still gonna go through your Westlake platform coming to our office each week as a change report, and we're gonna push them through Business Solver. So from this point forward, Business Solver is the portal, okay? So we're gonna process all changes and get all access to information and activity via the Business Solver portal. For all intent and purposes, the IBX portal is done, okay? Colleen. I'm advising that they go and set up IB Express accounts in preparation of not getting that card 11-1, but every attempt is being made to get that card by 11-1, so it's really just a contingency plan. All right. So as I said, this is now our new normal. Business offer is where we're gonna go to check enrollments, to make changes, to term a person out, to issue a COBRA, to check our invoices, and this is going to be uh, taking complete and total replacement of the IBX portal, all right? So moving forward, this is where we're going to now land on everything. But there was this gap that we need to talk about. The gap occurred between 924 and now. And what we asked via email, and we send out these blast emails to everyone, and we get acknowledgement from 85 to 90% of PaceBOA, but there are some out there that don't. We advise that all changes come through our office. That was the email that we sent out. We got this deluge of 9-1 changes and then 10-1 changes, and we were processing them two places. IBX on one side, 
and then we had to mirror it in Business Solver, so that they synced up. So that was what was necessary to have that done, because when Blue Cross is going to get this file from Business Solver, Business Solver is going to take precedence over everything else. So if there's not a mirror record, then that record falls out. So therefore, any school or any group administrator who has been keying their own people and changes into the portal from 924 until today, you need to let us know about that. If you don't let us know about that, those members will possibly fall out, is what it's called, when that system uh, data is sent over from Business Solver into Blue Cross, and that goes out uh, tomorrow, and then we'll be sent weekly files after that point, okay? So we're just cautioning people about that, but while we're doing that and your stomach is sinking, I was actually gonna ask for a show of hands, but I didn't wanna do that, because if one person did it, we'd, it's awkward. Um, so what we're gonna do is, is explain how you can rectify the situation. So, so what we did was, we said to everybody, A, if you're gonna make any changes, have them come through our offices, and we'll put them into the IBC portal and in the business solver, and then B, give us all open enrollment elections, and we'll process all open enrollment elections for 11-1 effective dates. So that's our conference room table, and it was covered, and then the side tables were covered as well, from all of the schools faxing, FedExing, dropping off, or we went and picked up, um, you know, volumes and volumes of changes. And actually, it was a good year, amazingly, because the renewal was low, which was manna from heaven, and, and, and that allowed a lot of schools, 85 to be specific, to not make changes. They kept their plans as they were, so that was great, but we still had people add dependents, shake off dependents, adjust vision, et cetera, and that all came in through our office, and we have just gotten done. Well, that's not true. Do you have your pile? There's a few more. Jackie has a few more, and we're working on those. We'll get done that. It has to be over by midnight tonight, so our people back in our office are still keying madly, and then it all completes uh, this evening, but what will happen is you have the ability to make an adjustment. So the trial bill, which is not the official bill, and this is a huge, huge differentiator from Blue Cross, you actually are gonna get an invoice which can be reconciled before you pay it. So what you're used to is paying as billed from Blue Cross and that invoice was always wrong, or it had a large um, uh, probability of being inaccurate in some regard. Well, now what you'll get is an invoice that you can review, and you'll say, that actually should be husband-wife. It's loaded as family. And you'll have three days to make an adjustment before the final bill is actually uh, live, and it will allow you the ability to reconcile and true up before they draw off of the account. So we found that to be a, a, a massive plus. What we're asking people to do is, when this trial bill opens up, which is this Thursday, you go online, you review all of the open enrollment changes that were submitted to our office for processing, check them for accuracy, call us if you see any issues, we'll adjust them with you. This is gonna be a good learning curve for all. And then that bill will finalize and show on 1017 next Friday, not this Friday, the Friday following, okay? So we like that component of, of Business Solver, the ability to make real-time changes which will reflect. One other thing is this question has been asked, what if a school had been carrying some type of a balance, whether it be a credit or a debit, to Blue Cross? Okay? So let's just say school A has, you know, a debit that they feel that that's needs to get squared up. Well, what we're going to do there is we're starting 11-1, clean slate, zero balances. And we're not gonna carry over those credits or debits into the Business Solver platform because we found the accounting would have been nightmarish. So Blue Cross is going to actually sever, they're not gonna forgive. <laughs> what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, okay, starting 11-1, it's clean billing, but they're gonna go back to those individual schools and say, look, there's this $4,500 uh, credit and they'll cut you a check. Or inversely, they'll say, there's a $4,500 debit, let's talk about it and they'll square that up, but that's all prior to 1031, and that's gonna kinda of be the old world, whereas the new world moving forward into Business Solver starts with a clean slate. So we thought that was really nice, okay? In terms of the timeline, I put this page together 
it made me go blind, so then I did this. Which one do you like? I'm a visual learner. I like a calendar better than, a, than a this. I'll send them both out as a PDF so you don't have to jot them down, and it's not in your attachment because I just did it this morning. So let's, let's take a look at how this is actually going to work. Okay? We're in the red on the 7th and the 8th, and this is our business solver training. Now, on Thursday, Friday, and in through the 13th, you'll be given access, and you'll be able to go online, I'll show you specifically where, to pull down your trial invoice. You'll review that, and you'll check for discrepancies, and if it's what you expected it to be, then that bill is done and finalized, and that will reissue on the 17th. But if there are changes that you wanted to make, we can assist you with that. We'll walk you through how to make those changes, and then it will true up with what you have on your records. 17th is a Friday, and the final invoice will be issued online. So this is an online platform. There is no more paper. You won't be getting a bill from Blue Cross. That has ceased. So what will happen instead is you'll get an email from our offices, and then it will say, your invoice is up. Please go online, pull it down, review it, and that would be your finalized invoice. So you get your first email from us on Thursday saying the trial bills are up, and then you get your next one from us on Friday the 17th saying, please pull down the final invoice. The final invoice must be paid as billed. Okay? There, there is no more wiggle on that. If you do not pay as billed, we are immediately faced with a problem because Blue Cross is going to be looking for that number, Business Offer is going to be looking for that number, and we really can't have any kind of differentiation between those two data points. Okay? So it's pay as billed on the 17th. The process you have to know this by now because some of you I harassed to the point of you're ready to call the cops. I needed to get those bank and account numbers from you. So I was continuously going out with that ACH suite form. Thank you for your patience and compliance. We got them all, which is amazing. <laughs> so uh, we, we have that all together. We're using Bryn Mawr Trust, a local institution we're very happy with. And what they're going to do is Business Solver is going to sweep the accounts for the amount that's shown in the final bill on the 17th. They'll start that process on the 21st. So the money should be in your accounts on the 21st for the sweep. They'll pull those monies down and they will transfer those funds to Bryn Mawr Trust's two-day process and they'll get that to them on the Friday the 24th. Bryn Mawr Trust is going to look to see all that information that came in, matches the records, and they have what they need to pay the two carriers, Blue Cross and Delta Dental. And then we have built ourselves, as Bob Miller told us in an email, we've built ourselves a cushion for stragglers. So if there was a situation where a school didn't have the money in the account or didn't uh, allow us to take or rescind it, uh, we are giving ourselves that time um, from the 27th to the 30th to contact the schools and have them wire the monies in. Because again, we can't go through this process of a short pay. We're one entity now. So it's not a situation where a school could say, oh, I'm not going to go this month, I'm going to go next month. That's not allowable. What would happen in that situation is that school would be immediately flagged, a dunning notice would go out, the pharmacy would be termed, and their medical would be termed 30 days later. So there are real stakes here. On the last day of the month is when we will remit to the carriers that would satisfy that uh, invoice out for the medical and the dental, and then we start it all again in the next month, again with trial bill period, the actual invoice period, the ACH sweep, and the remitting to the carriers. Yes? Is that always going to happen on the second to last No, because if you looked at a November and December calendar, the end of the month pushes back. So Thanksgiving and Christmas affect this. So the full calendar is actually going to be sent out to everybody for review. And then 2015, it actually frees up because there's days of the month that go to 31 and, and, and kind of help in that regard. So good question, Mark. So that timeline will be enunciated so that you can plan accordingly for your accounting. Okay? All right. Let's go into business software, shall we? These uh, slides you should have. Um, I might have added one or two just for extra detail on the deck up top, but for your takeaway purposes, um, we wanted to put in the main kind of pertinent slides for you. So this is the, the, the key login page, and everyone, again, is going to get an email, which is going to say, here is your username. You're going to be given uh, the opportunity to create a password. And once you are uh, through that stage, you'll see this screen. And there's my username and password. And as soon as I answer that, I then drop into the PaysBoa homepage. So you'll notice in the upper left, 
That's the Paisboa flock of geese. Now, that's our access at Armstrong, Doyle, and Carroll. We're what's called super users. I like that. I tell my kid, I'm a super user. That, <laughs> it gets me nothing, but I try. Yours is going to look similar to this, but what's really uh, neat about the business side of our functionality is every school's page is customizable. So what will happen is, and we'll walk you through this individually, you can go into the administration section of the, of the page, and it allows you to format the look and feel of this to your desire. Now, that means putting up a different image. That means putting up your school logo, because the intent is that come 2015, your employees will go in here and make their elections. So when that happens, they want to go in and see your specific school brand and the layout that you're desiring so that that logic is totally yours as opposed to business solvers or ours. And I think you're going to really, really be pleased with how easy it is to, to manipulate and modify things in here. You can actually even load up videos. So one of the things that we were thinking about was creating a high deductible video to explain to people how the high deductible works with the health savings account, why that might be beneficial for people. So therefore, come next fall, if we don't have the ability to do on-site training, you can push your staff to the page and ask them to watch the educational video. And you can do that with a number of different tools here. Plus, you can put all of your SBCs out there and your plan, uh, plan summaries as well. And it's all sitting in one hosted site. Very nice. So at the top, you can see the blue ribbon. And that's your, your toolbar. And the toolbar, I'm just cutting this into a, a couple of different sections here, has a drop down for each one. So on the left, it starts with company, and you'll see a, a number of different subsets there and benefits as well. Employees is going to be the one that you'll probably use the most of the time because that's adding employees or terming employees. So that's kind of the key functionality. And under administration, which is the fourth toolbar there, is where the invoices will be posted. So come this Thursday, if you've gotten your username and login, you'll go on to Business Solver, you'll click on administration, and you'll find your invoices posted there, specific to you. You'll review them, and then if you wanted to make adjustments, you would go under employees, and we'll walk you through exactly how you would do that, because it's fairly simple, okay? But that's going to be where you would find those invoices posted. The last tab is a reports tab. I'm not gonna actually go into the reporting at all. We will, though. I wanna circle back to this at some point in the beginning of 2015 to kind of talk about the increased functionality and specifically the reporting section. We got ourselves a Maserati of a web page, and we're only using the surface level. So as time goes on and we get deeper and deeper and deeper into its functionality, we want to bring everyone back for one-offs to talk about, did you know you can do this? Did you know you can do that? Because I think you're really going to want to use this to its maximum uh, allowances to make your life easier. This is an important slide. That is a penny. When you see your invoices this Thursday, Friday, and next Monday, we want to talk about the hanging penny. Now, some of you have experienced this in the past, where your rate could have been $520.19. But when you got your invoice, it said, 520 cents. So it was off by one penny, the hanging penny. We are keeping an eye on the hanging penny here because if you recall, we had to add ASO, administrative service fees, to the rates. So we added Pace Boas fees and we added the wellness fees and we added the business solver fees. When we did all those rates, if the number was $500.45, it could have been 45.5, 45.5. That's going to round up. So there might be one cent off on certain tiers of certain plans. Saf, you went, you pulled the book, and you went through all of your rates, and you sent them to me for review. And I went through them, and I said, it's off a cent here, and it's off a cent there. And you made those adjustments for University of the Sciences. I didn't have that conversation with everybody. I did have that conversation with a lot of people, and we sent out Bible rates to a lot of people. But if you did your own, and then you get the bill, and you see that it's off by one cent, we wanted to explain why. Blue Cross had also dealt with this issue in the past. Marty is not here from Bryn Mawr, and Michael is not here from Gladwin, but those were two that had come to us for a number of years and said, my, my one rate on this one tier is off by a penny, and we'd have to go in there and figure it out, and it was always because of that hanging decimal. So just calling your attention to that, okay? 
So we're going to go into the actual functionality of the plan uh, right now. And what we'll look at first is how to add an employee. It's incredibly simple. And I'm going to give you the screenshots, and then I'm actually going to let Jackie come up here and drive, and she's going to load me. So what we do is you click on the employee on the taskbar, and that drops you down to uh, your, your options underneath that. You go to the first one on the left, which is add an employee. It's then going to drop into all of these needed fields. And they're so self-explanatory. And you could just key through this as incredibly fast as you can. You're going to put in the names. You're going to put in the socials. You're going to put in the plan that they're going to choose. But when I say the plan they're going to choose, I'm actually talking about something a little bit different. It's called a structure group. So all the information at the top of the page is self-explanatory. Uh, what is their status? They're active. Are they full-time? Are they part-time, et cetera? But if you look down at the bottom of the page, it starts with Abington, and then it goes to Abrams Hebrew. Every school was given three structure groups. And here are the structures. You can see it on the page in the handouts. You are either COBRA, eligible, or ineligible. Those were the three buckets that we put every person in. Now, what does that mean? Well, when we sent over that 23,000 file from Blue Cross, that's all the eligibles. But if I'm an employee at Episcopal, I might not be on the medical plan. But in 2015, Cindy might want to merge her payroll into Business Solver, and that would then have two buckets, wouldn't it? Eligible, anybody who's on a medical plan, and ineligible, the people that are not, or the people who are part-time. And then the third bucket is obviously COBRA. So you'll see three buckets. You want to obviously go to eligible. If you go to COBRA and you try and load somebody through that that should be an active employee, it will tell you you can't. It won't let you move forward because it will realize the disconnect in the logic. But when you pull up your school, I actually am pulling up all the schools here because we have the super user access. When Ann goes into Cabrini, she's going to see the eligible, the ineligible, and the COBRA. She'll pull up the eligible, and she'll go from there. But those are the three subgroup buckets. When she goes in there, <coughs> she's then just simply going to click on that third tab over, which is called employee data, after she's added all that information in there. This is from Mark Gibbons. Mark, if you see down at the bottom page there, annual compensation. Annual compensation, I had to put that in as a field, $1. It's not a needed field right now, OK? But moving forward, with the Affordable Care Act asking, is your plan affordable? And are you doing the proper things with the amount of contribution for your particular plan? That data becomes important. So Business Solver has built a repository for it. It's not a necessary field to move forward. Or is it, Jackie? Well, you just have to put one, one in there. You just put a one in there uh, and, and move forward. But next year in 2015, if you integrate your payroll, you could fill that in with their actual payroll. And then you'll see on the following sli slides, it will say, what is their deduction for the medical? And then you have a lot more data to work with, and that's going to enhance things on the reporting side down the line. So again, not necessary for 2014, but they gave us this huge platform to work with for 2015, 16, and beyond. Colleen. Uh, does eligible include those former employees who are 65 special? No. So if everyone heard the question, is this include 65 special or any retirees? No. Active employees only. We are not doing, through the Business Solver platform, any retiree plans whatsoever. We kept them completely bifurcated because to bring them in would have been very unclean. So for your purposes, you won't get a Blue Cross bill for your active population of Keystone 15, Personal Choice 20, 30, 70. But if you have a Keystone 65 or Personal Choice 65, that invoice will still come in paper. And you can use the portal to make adjustments for your retiree population if that applies at your school. Is that OK, Colleen? OK. So I click on employee data, and then it takes me to this field. All right? It's going to say, what do you want to do with this member that you just loaded? And I'm going to say, well, it's open enrollment. I'm going to add her in this open enrollment tile. I simply click on that yellow one towards the left. But I also have the options of life events in the middle and then administration on the right. For our purposes, let's uh, add her into the open enrollment. I would say simply, She's for the 2014 open enrollment. And it's going to ask me to reconfirm that. And I'd say yes. And then I'm going to choose the plans that we loaded into this system. So this is actually Helen. 
this is not you, but this is your group, okay? And I would then take Laura, whose name I blocked out, Jackie scrubbed this for me, making sure there was no HIPAA non-compliance. I'm gonna add her into the uh, HMO plan by simply clicking that button, which says select. And then I'm gonna confirm that yes, I do want the coverage for her and hit next. Now it's an HMO plan. So on HMO, you need to announce your primary care doctor. We took all the primaries that, that were in the file already and we passed those all over to Business Solver. So those have been loaded, but this is a new hire. So I would have to put that field in because if I don't, you should know this, the uh, ID card will show up as a dummy. So the dummy ID card that you would get there would not have Dr. Smith and you'd have to reissue them a new one after you loaded that one field, okay? It doesn't prevent them from getting coverage and it shows up on the bill, but it's just an administrative problem you have to overcome. So the last thing it's gonna do is just simply ask you to approve it. You review all the information and you click the approval button and then we'll give you a confirmation of what you just did. So the confirmation is a simple number, but you can also print that page off for your records. However, it keeps it all there for you. And you can go on to any person and find out who touched it, when, and exactly what they did. And that record is kept in perpetuity, so there isn't any kind of confusion as to, did I make that change, did I not make that change, this person's different, why, who did it? So it's fingerprints. Yes, Andrea. Exact same logic, and, and that's what we're gonna do is when we go into Arcadia to load me, uh, you have Delta, right? Yes. So you'll see a Delta Dental option. So what we did there, Andrew, just so everybody's clear in terms of the process, is we took everyone's structure as it currently stood, and then after they made their elections through open enrollment, we told Blue Cross what those were. Blue Cross built that into that gigantic crosswalk spreadsheet. They pushed that all over to Business Solver, and Business Solver built that in the back end. So if we went into any school here, and trust me, we spent the last five days doing this, and said, okay, well, they made a change. Did that change get reflected on the business offer side? We've been spending hours and hours and hours QAing all that to make sure, yes, that did in fact happen. Okay, yes? Two slides back, when you had the HMO, you're putting in the primary care. Now, that reference center, is that to look up if you just have the name but you don't have the PCP ID number? Correct. We actually have been toggling when we got to this slide, Phyllis, going, uh, the question is, when it says reference center, uh, up there on the right hand side, does that take you to the IBX site? I was actually just going, I toggle to the IBX page and I look up the provider there okay. and then came back to it because I didn't want to lose this page. So I was just keeping two web pages open and I go over to IBX and look it up and come back and drop it in. One, one last thing is a lot of the apps that we keyed were using the old IBX PCP number and you can tell the difference. The new ones are shorter. So that was another thing which was kind of curious. If, if anyone is in the weeds like we are, you'll, you'll pick up on these kind of nuances. I see a couple of heads shaking like, yeah, I feel your pain. All right, so we've been, if it's a Dr. Smith and the long number, we'd say, well, that's not accurate. So we'd go back to the page, pull up Dr. Smith, put in the right number, push it forward, because we didn't want the fallout. Yes, Helen. question is will it check the length it will not so you're gonna have to just check for your accuracy on there the other thing though Helen is it's an agile system so all these changes can be made all throughout the course of the month and reconciled even in that trial bill period so you can go through here and make these changes it will push through to Blue Cross and push out to the member so there's a transaction page there's a confirmation page and then you know that you're done with that member and you can move on to the next one yes That is an excellent question. Honest to goodness, that's an excellent question. And we, we, didn't even, we wrote down a bunch of questions to pose. That was one we did not. Here's the thing. If the member contacts IBX directly and says, I want to see Dr. Jones, that will be keyed on the IBC system. But the IBC system is secondary to Business Solver. Business Solver would come in with Dr. Smith and knock out Dr. Jones. So it all has to come through Business Solver, and that's us and you. So your members would have to be told, please come to us for the changes and we'll key them for you and that will push through, okay? But you understand the logic? Yeah, so the business offer takes Trump over everything else. Donna. So Blue Cross will not communicate yet to the contact Blue Cross to make the 
No. So the question is, will Blue Cross contact them? No. Why not contact them? Or notify them? No. So what, what's happening there is you have this building, Blue Cross, which is moving 10,000 different directions. And the person who took that customer service call has no idea what PaceBoa is, Business Solver is, or that issue. So it's, it's on us to advise our people to push that information through here. But here's the thing. That's for now. In just a couple of months, this will be pushed to the members. And so they won't call Blue Cross. They'll go online and they'll key it themselves. And you and I will do that. For those of you on the webinar, I just washed my hands. I did that move. <laughs> yes? Yes, that is actually a very good question to ask. And I have a list of how we created this. What we did is we went to the IBX and said, who are the current portal users for all the schools right now? And they gave us that list. And that's who we're going to reach out to. But every school has the ability to add other usage in there. So for, for Helen at University of the Arts, she is going to be the primary. But if she wants to pass it off to Chris or whomever else in the office, you simply can give them that access through the administrative tool. And then you'd have multiple people going into the account uh, at, the same time. at the same time. Yeah, so for our purposes, we have 10 people at, at ADC on all of these schools all at once, and it's not bonking anybody out. Okay, that was adding a, a member. This is a, a, an indicator of how to add a dependent. Just really quickly, because I don't want to get tedious here. <clears throat> for adding a dependent, it's actually incredibly easy. For adding a new member, you had to key a number of fields, and I was finding myself getting annoyed. I don't do this every day, so I was like, this is killing me. Um, for adding a dependent, it's much, much simpler. So up in the right-hand side, and I'll show you this in a second, I, I think this is brilliant. You put any name in there, and it pulls up everybody. So if it's Smith, we'll have 100 files. But that's us. For you, Mia, a PA school for the deaf, Smith might only be two or three names. So Smith comes in and says, I want to add my daughter. No problem. Click in Smith, pulls up that record. You then down at the bottom would say dependent information. And it says, if you can read at the lower left, no dependents listed. So you would click edit. Once you click edit, it's going to take you to this field that says, do you want to add a new dependent? Because it's just checking. So you'd say, yes, I do. As soon as you click on that, it drops you to this. But the information that you're keying is simply name, social, date of birth, and then it asks you, address is the same as the mom and dad? And you'd say, or spouse, and you'd say, yep. And then you'd move on to the election. Mark. Do you want to add throughout the month the day that Good question. Question is, if you do it all throughout the day of the month, does that go live when? Well, this is a homework question for everyone. We asked you what your eligibility rules are. And you either got back to us or you didn't. <laughs> and if you got back to us, that's what we told Business Solver, and those are the rules that we built. If you didn't get back to us, we said, make the eligibility rules the default rules, which are, if I add you on the 25th, you go live on the first day of the next month. If I add you on the second, same thing. Or if you're Cabrini and you want to complicate my life, you say, first of the month following, unless hired on first of the month. If I'm lying, I'm dying. No, but she was not the only one. There was a number of schools like that, and it's an interesting rule, because if you're hired on the first, you should get benefits on the first. If it's the second, it pushes to the next month. But that was how we did that, Mark, OK? One other thing here is when we put in the information about the dependent, you do have to put who that person is. And you can see that it's giving you all of these options, foster child, grandchild, parent, spouse. And the onus is on you to collect the information if we have a foster child, if we have uh, any type of court order types of materials. You as the HR administrator would have that documentation on file. Business solver doesn't need it. We don't necessarily need it. But you, you would want to have that information just for your own records. And then after you do it, you simply put in what coverage you want. So let's, let's just use this example. And I'm going to say that all this member wants is not the medical. They want the freestanding vision, the $75 freestanding vision. So after I've entered their information, it's going to take me to the medical page and say, what do you want to do here? Do you want to give them medical? Do you want to give them uh, dental? Would you like to give them the freestanding vision? And on this option, I would simply say, give Kathleen the vision effective 11 one 2014 as soon as I hit approve, that gets loaded. Or inversely, I got a lot of apps that say term the vision. Where's Joanne? Joanne? Joanne from Haverford? 
There you are. How many terms did we do for, for Haverford? Lots of, lots of freestanding terms. 75% went in and we just would go into this field here and I would click no. But when I do a term, whether it be for medical, dental, or vision, it asks me, are you sure? So there's that one page prompter that says, please reconfirm the term there. And because it's open enrollment, I'd say, yeah, say yes. And it doesn't issue any type of COBRA notification because it's an open enrollment activity as opposed to a, a term like that, okay? Now speaking of, of COBRA and speaking of terms, that's the last very nice piece to this. And we're actually gonna wrap up and I'm gonna have Jackie walk us through real quick. If we did have someone who was going to term, again, we key their name in. So we used PA School for the Deaf and we'll say Smith, poor Smith, but poor Smith is going bye-bye. And we key in Smith and we pull up onto the right-hand side, the administrative tile. And you can see the last one says employee termination. So I'd simply click in the name, click on the term option. That's gonna take me to this field, which says, what do you wanna do here? Is this an involuntary or a voluntary term? And after you've entered that information and the date of the effective, it's then going to drop you into the qualifying event notice page. So this is the information that you're gonna put in and you have to enter all these fields. As Soon as you do that though, and you hit next, the COBRA QE is going to go out for that particular member. And so they're going to come off of the active, it's going to issue that all for you, and it's one-stop shopping. So it turns them off the active bill, puts them into the COBRA bucket, and from business solvers offices, sends out that notification. So it's all done with three clicks. I had a question over here. Emily. Are we notified the uh, or when a dependent is no longer eligible, age 26, to okay. make the change in business solver system? Well, it's coded in the business solver system that they're too old, so it wouldn't take, but we still have the same plan rules. The question is for the 26-year-olds. We still have the same plan rules as we've always had. You can stay on the plan uh, in the year 26, either until the end of the calendar year or uh, the next open enrollment. So if we had a kid, this open enrollment turned 26 in February of 2015, it will carry them all the way to the end. That rule still stays in place. Okay? Um, and first. The question is, when you enroll a person for the first time, do they get the initial rights notice? And Business Solver is now taking over all COBRA operations and will issue the initial rights notification. Okay? Yes, Heather. Good question. If you do not offer COBRA, then you are not part of this conversation. So there are a couple of schools that don't, a couple of schools that did it in-house, a couple of schools that uh, had their own vendors. And what we did was we went out to uh, all of the vendors that we could identify, collected all those COBRA information uh, population sets, gave it to Business Solver, who then sent out notifications to them about their open enrollment elections. So this is actually in the midst right now. And anyone who didn't reach out to us because they were non-communicative, uh, we'll have to find that out as we move forward. So there might be some bumps. Yes, Mary. Yes, so the question is, if you terminate an employee and they have dependent coverages, it would go out to the entire family and anyone who is affected by that term. Jack? I have to go to my subject matter expert. So you would term the employee and that would fall through, so it's not like you have to click each radio dial. Um, there was another hand over here, Helen. Yes, so the question is, will they do it automatically? Will they send that out automatically? And that's for the dependents who are 26 and coming off the plan. And does business solver know that um, the coverage is terminated when they termed the end of the month following the last day of employment? The question is, does business solver know that the coverage gets termed the end of the month following the last day? Yes. Okay. And again, the entire system is predicated on rules, and we were building rules all along the summer, making sure that those things were what everyone agreed to, and that was one of the key ones. Uh, yes, Colleen. Uh, I have two. The first question is, if we already have an existing COBRA member, do we enroll them just like the rest of our eligible employees? If you have an existing COBRA member, 
we should have been notified by you about those COBRA sets, and we would have pushed that into business offer system. So there isn't a need for the school to then load them because they should already be live. But what you're going to do, Colleen, to answer that question for everybody is trial bill goes up on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you want to work over the weekend, Monday, and you would be reviewing your roster and making sure that everything came through. And if it didn't, you'd contact us and we would square that up before the final bill on the 17th. One other thing, you were supposed to interrupt me here. This is a huge undertaking, right? We can agree on that? Yeah. It's been massive. So therefore, if we go through the month of October with some bumps, that is to be expected. We're trying to mitigate those bumps as much as possible, but we feel rather confidently that by the time we get into November and December, this will be smooth sailing. We just ask for, for some understanding for the, the bumps that may occur, such as a Cobra who didn't come over, where are they next you know, Friday we're getting a phone call saying, well, why isn't this person in there? And it's because you never told us about them. So we'd have to just rectify that. We'll, we'll work together. There was a second question. Um, she just wants co confirmation. They get COBRA notice for Delta Dental also, That's right? That's correct. Okay. If you are on the Delta Dental platform, because this is Independence Blue Cross and Delta Dental, so if you have United Concordia, you're not in the mix here, uh, you would get COBRA notifications for Delta Dental as well. Okay, good questions. Yes, Sandra. If you have, when we get our bill and we do have somebody that's on COBRA, we notify you and everything. Will we see them on the bill and still collect money from them, or will they business solve it? The question is if you have an existing COBRA member, who's handling the administration of them? The answer is yeah. business solver. The total administration has been outsourced. So you, you might be well relieved to be out of that mix. I think you should be. <laughs> there was a question back there. Yes, Heather. Yeah. Cobra, just not pop up? Cobra will not pop up. We didn't build it for Silver Springs. There were certain schools that don't have Cobra, didn't want Cobra, and we just didn't build it out for them. Okay? Yes? So as long as you've been notified that people have Cobra, business software is going to make the transition from the old administrator to this administrator, notify the Cobra participant, build that, and collect. The question is, as long as we were notified at ADC that you have this Cobra population, and we transmitted that data over to Business Solver, has that trans uh, transition occurred? Yes. And, and the way to QA it is to go in and we'll pull up some members uh, in the trial bill period to make sure that they all move through. So it's pretty neat. Will the system accept an upload? Will the system accept an upload? Uh, that's a loaded question. Helen knows that. <laughs> She's trying to trick me. She's actually passed her quota on questions, by the way, by three. Um, Okay, yeah, they can accept an upload. However, you and I know this. They've been having full focus on getting this thing up and live. So we have to give them a pinch of breathing room to get through this period, and then we can work on uh, ad hocs or one-offs to their system, okay? Yes, Colleen. Um, this is a question about changes to the system. First, you said that we had to make any changes, i.e. change in physician. Then you said the employee would make the change. She's confused. I did say both because I'm talking about this platform on a move forward basis. So let me clarify. Every school will have the ability to make a change to their invoice in what we're calling the trial bill period. I'll go to that page here. It's the calendar, October. There it is. So if you'll see on the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, we're calling that the trial bill invoice period where a person can go in, see the elections that we have loaded for you that are reflective of all your open enrollment changes. If it's accurate, go enjoy yourself. If it's inaccurate, contact us and we'll work on it. Okay? That's what I'm referring to in terms of the changes for the groups and the current elections that will reflect on their invoice. What that individual online is referring to secondarily is the members making changes is a 2015 initiative. 2015 for your open enrollments, we shouldn't see any more paper. In 2015, your members should be able to go online if they want to, to your particular portal page, and at Friends Central, they'll say, Catherine, when are, when, when are our benefits up? They're up right now, go online. And they'll go in and they'll say, here are my three plan options, here are how much the plans cost, 
Here are the similarities and differences based upon the benefit summaries that have been loaded. Here's a video about one of them. Make their election, hit submit, and be done. Your life is better, our life is better, everybody's smiling. <laughs> we'll come to this meeting and just sing kumbaya. <laughs> Anna. Okay, your question, I already know what it is. Trust me, it's giving me an aneurysm. <clears throat> the University of the Sciences uh, has done a, a different type of uh, setup where they, they've offered a kind of a separation package. Um, we had to build you a completely distinct workaround. It's been built. All right? Saf and I, I believe we've talked about this a little bit, but we'll loop back to that because that, that was certainly a, a, a wrinkle. Was there another question? Andrea. Oh, thank you very much for asking that. Let's go back to where we were here. Okay. When you think about this for 2015, as I was just saying about the, the members going online, you know, that's going to be one facet, which I think everyone is going to be very, very appreciative of. We've been hearing this for years, that, that business managers at the schools are overworked. They don't have enough time in the day to get through everything. So this is going to be a key outsource of this workload. And I'm frankly super excited about that to, to push this on to the members. It's going to be cleaner. It's going to be easier for you. It should make everyone's lives a little bit better. But there's a couple of other iterations with Business Software 2015 that, that should be um, rewarding. First one, we talked about this. We had a conversation in the summer about the Affordable Care Act's pay or play mandate and how the large schools had to start preparing for that with the compliance features. And uh, I believe that everyone left with their heads spinning and their eyes rolling, kind of a little weary because the lawyers really were very detailed. That's the nicest way to put it. Um, what, what we're doing for 2015 is building that component because we talked about a resource that exists and that's going to be part of this. Also, is to Andrea's point, uh, Unum. If you have Unum coverage through the Pays Bubble Block, and I think that there's about 60 some odd schools that do that, maybe 70 now, you would be able to have consolidated billing that would show Medical, dental, vision, unum, all in one site. And so your employees would have the ability to go in there and actually make the elections uh, all, all inclusive. One stop shopping, okay? Uh, and then lastly, like we had just mentioned, the, the, the fully paperless 2015 enrollment, which is the dream of everybody. Um, just a couple of real quick points, and I'm going to take Jackie uh, up here, and we're going to go through one of these changes. We have the super user access. So any issue that you run into, use this as a resource. Further, this is a lot of information, and I, I actually got through it in an hour and five minutes. So if you're feeling overloaded, you should be, OK? But what we're telling you is we are more than happy to take a call or to actually sit with you at your office and walk you through the site. I think you're going to find it's incredibly intuitive amazingly easy to work with. Honestly, I, I can't say anything more deferential about myself than I don't do this very well, and I was killing it. I mean, I was processing <laughs> dozens of apps a half an hour, uh, I just ripping through them. So if I can, I know you can. So please, be confident in that. But if you got into a pickle, call us. We'll come out. Business software's going to have an ER hotline. It's going to be provided to everybody. What's nice about that is if you're sitting at your computer, they could say, hey, can I log in? And you'd say, sure, because they want to see what you're seeing. So then they jump onto the page with you, and you work together to resolve. Okay? And then the last thing is this training today is just the first. We're going to have a webinar two weeks from today, and we're going to try and do two of them. And this is really just if you want to join in. Um, there's a woman. That's actually her at the table on the right. Isn't that Kim? That's Kim Barney. All these people in these pictures are, are Business Solver employees. I can tell you their names. Um, let's see here. Uh, OK, I lied. I don't know them. <laughs> but the, the, all of our architects have been in previous slides. I just I wanted to add them in here. But that woman there, Kim Barney, she is the trainer for all of Business Solver. And she was going to jump onto this session here, but to merge the webinar, because we have people currently sitting on our webinar, with uh, another presentation I thought would blow this computer up. So instead, what we're going to do is put this out for anybody who wants to call in two weeks out from now, join in, and she's going to walk you through everything if you feel the need. But after two weeks, you might be fine. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'll show you this last page. So if you recall, the first slide was blurry. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a motif here, right? And now it's clear, because you all understand. Get it? 
Sin? Right? Blown away? Okay. You don't have to humor me. I get it. So let's do this. Here is the Business Solver page. And what we're going to do is just take a minute or two to actually walk through. This slide over here, uh, to my right, your left, it, it's a pinch cloudy. That, that one over there seems a little bit clearer. So w whatever's easier for you. But the process, it would have changed that plan on her, but Allison Smith point of service. Let's just check on that later. <laughs> now, really quickly, and then we'll actually stop, because this was booked until uh, 1 o'clock, and it's only 12.10. Uh, Let's just add an employee. So here we go. I'm going to try it. You'll see I'll, I'll probably mess it up a good, a good deal. Add an employee, and the employee is going to be myself. So. No pressure. Uh, one thing that we liked about this, I don't know about you, but you didn't need to add in dashes. You didn't need to add in any of those fields. So my, my birth date's 12373, so 120373, not 1973. I hit enter. If I had hit tab, it populates it. See? So in terms of keying speed, you don't have to put in dash. Some of those old systems make you do that. It's a pain, OK? I'm on state, PA, tab, it fills it. I'm on gender, male, tab, it fills it. The next fields, ethnic identification, disabled, not red, so not necessary, okay? Benefit status is active. <coughs> Date of hire is not a necessary field, but let's just do it. It is a necessary field. I'm sorry, it is a necessary field. Sorry, I was thinking about the uh, currently active employees. All right, now, job title, employment status, is going to be full-time. But you can see that there's a number of options there. Retired, part-time, leave of absence. Not all of these apply. Obviously, the military one's a peculiar one. But they've given us everything for future builds. OK? So we're going to go full-time here. Now we're going to go into the structure group. Now, the structure group, remember, there's three for everybody. You would only see three, but we have everybody here. So I'm going to go into Arcadia, because she said I could. My comp is $1. Thank you. And the frequency is biweekly. OK? Now I click on Employee Data. So now it's going to take me into Arcadia's plans. I am a open enrollment election, 11-1. All of my information is in there and is accurate. This is just filling in the medical and the dental fields. Am I missing something? All right, do I want to add my kids? No. Now what plan do I want? I'm going to go with the C3, F3. And I want it for me. And then it populates this with the 11 one. Now I'm going to put in a doctor number. That's not accurate. And it's going to say, do you want to have any type of vision or delta? And I'm going to say, wave coverage. And it will say, why are you waving? Well, I don't want it. I already have something else. Because Arcadia offers dental as well as medical. So here it is. I've taken the HMO. I've taken the dental. I've keyed myself. That took us a total of three minutes, two minutes. If I um, print this page out, I've got my confirmation. But I just added myself into Arcadia's plan. How do I reconfirm that? Well, click on my name. Clicking on my name brings up my transaction history. So here's all the information I just keyed. There's my address, my SOCH, et cetera, et cetera. Now, down here, it tells me my election. So you say, wait a minute. Why, why is John Mannion on our plan? Who, who keyed that? Hmm, John Mannion did. So the people who are given the access, we want to keep a fingerprint for. And this is the fingerprint. Here's the record. All that information sits right there. This is record one of one. So after you've been on the system for four or five years, you will just move to the right, move to the left, and you'll have endless reams of information. I think that's huge in terms of creating legacy. A lot of times people wonder, who, who did that? Who touched that? And we can always find the, the guilty person uh, by going into the history section there. Okay. 
Yes, Andrea. Um, for the high deductible payments, will those there be a question of the one that you mentioned? It's an excellent question. Thank you so much for asking it, actually. The question is, for a high deductible plan, at Church Farm School, they have the HD3 plan. Where, where's the HSA functionality? We didn't have the time and ability to marry the health savings account into um, Business Solver for this open enrollment. So what we're doing is anybody who moved into a high deductible plan and elected the HSA, we're sending that information directly to Bancor for loading. So we've taken all those apps and we're keying them into a spreadsheet. We're going to ship that over to... Uh, to Bancor at the end of this week, and that's going to serve as that function. 2015, you'd have the ability to pick their HSA, and that's going to fire off to Bancor Bank as well. Pretty nice. Say, like in February, we hire a new employee. It won't be 2015 open enrollment yet. Will we have to do that? So the question is in January, February 2015, will we have that functionality then? It's going to be to be determined. So as we're moving forward with Business Solver, building out different pieces of this, now that we've gotten the open enrollment hurdle behind us, we'll start, and HSA is one of the key components that we want to drive on. So that's going to be one and a few others. Um, and up until that point, we would take paper apps and send them down to Wilmington, Delaware for, for Bancord to key. Uh, but after we get that done, they'd have their ability to do that as well. OK, last thing. Jackie, turn me. She's better at the terming. <laughs> I'm a giver. She's a taker. <laughs> OK. So when you term somebody, you're going to go under admin if it's an employment term, and you're going to hit employment termination. Now, if he was still an active employee, but he was just waiving benefits during open enrollment, then you go under the open enrollment field like John just did to add, and you would just drop coverage because he's still an active employee. And then that's not a COBRA event. Right. So it wouldn't generate any COBRA if you do it that way. OK. In this situation, we're going to say that John was fired involuntarily. <laughs> and we're going to term him, say, 1130. So he was there for one month. And just hit continue. Now it takes me in to John. And you can see it's saying that he's now terminated, the reason why. The date over here that he was terminated is the 1030. And you scroll down, and I'm going to hit Edit for COBRA. And I'm going to insert the QE, the generated QEL letter. Employment termination, date of event. Now, it might not let me because I'm using a future date, so we'll see if it, if it allows us to. Um, Date of event was 11, say 12. And the last day of coverage is going to be 11.30. And I'm going to click on his name. Now, if he had dependents, his dependents' names will be down here, too, and you just click on them. And you just hit Next. And it looks like it took, so I'm <laughs> going to hit Next again. And then if you scroll down on his page at the bottom, it's going to show you the QE information that's going out, the date of the event, the last date of benefits, and the reason why he was terming. And I hit Approve. Now it's bringing up everything here. Um, employment termination, I don't have to do anything. The date's already in there. It's checked. It's just more like to review to make sure everything's correct. I'm going to hit Next. And that's it. And I didn't there you go. And there's your confirmation. Now, just so you don't get worried that the QE just went out from Arcadia for me, we are going to override this with our super user access and just kill myself out of the plan altogether. So that's nothing to worry about. Yes, cool. Um, I have a question about if somebody is receiving I just wanted to point out that date here. Right, so the question is, what if you wanted to have a continuation of benefits after you know, three months, six months? Yes, we would simply be putting that termination date in that field, and that's when it would go into effect. So you realize the last date of coverage is a termination date, not the actual date of the event? It depends on the plan rules, but your date of event. I remember you specifically. Harkin was very hard about date of event. 
So yours is hard coded because if you saw, I don't know if anyone noticed this, it said coverage is based upon the plan rules. It was a drop down. Did anyone see that? Harcum's plan rules are date of event. So that's how we built it. So it would be specific to that, whereas somebody else would be the end of the month following. That's a question that, that Anna asked me that gave me those, those fits. So the subsidization of the COBRA question came up, and um, it, that, that takes a very specific build, okay? Because here's why. Stay with me if you can. We're one entity, right? And if we have COBRA out there with some type of subsidization, it's very peculiar how we m work the mechanics of paying out that subsidy when it's to that home address. That home address is the, where the COBRA is at, premiums coming in uh, to business offer to pay the overall pays by a pot. If you're in there paying a piece of that pot, it messes things up. So that's why it has to be very carefully handled. So if you wanted to do that as an entity, you have to talk to us about it because it's a very specific and tedious build um, and we frankly don't encourage it. Yes. Uh, do we get notification that a COBRA notice went out and or get to see what it looks like? Uh, we could certainly send out uh, an example of what the QE notices look like. I don't think that's hard at all. Uh, in terms of a notification, that would be built into the reports. So uh, I'll just give a, a scroll up here. And you know we're not going into too much detail on the reports here. But within the report section, you would be able to run a whole host of uh, things from this section here, and if you wanted to find out who were your COBRA people for the last three months, that would be a simply a matter of three or four clicks and you'd be done. All right. Yes? Correct, because because the question is, you know, for Cornerstone Christian, you know, it, it's only one plan option there. So if we went in to Cornerstone Christian, you would see the single plan option. And we had other schools, you know, that might have had three or four. Four is the max, right? Two of a keystone, a personal choice, and a high deductible or a variation of that. So the most a person would ever see would be that. But then they could have two dental and a vision. So if they did open that up, there is a lot to choose from um, because some schools have complicated structures. Okay? All right. I'm seeing that deadened look in a lot of people's eyes. It was a lot, but I hope it was helpful. And what I know is that if you get into this in the next couple of days, you're gonna to think to yourself, this is good. And I, I am able to say that with confidence because everyone in our offices, if they found bugs, if they thought it was a little wonky or a little kind of uh, cumbersome to deal with, they would have brought that to our attention, and so far it's been nothing but, wow, this is really, really, really good to use. So with that, I'm going to conclude. Uh, I can certainly take one-on-one -on -one questions with anybody on an individual basis if you'd like, but I do want to point your attention over to Emily and the lunches over there, and I want to thank you for your time, and uh, good luck.